if you'd like to uh, pull your chair up a little closer to the loudspeaker, I wouldn't blame you at all. If you'd like to get inside the set, I wouldn't blame you very much. There's going to be some very deep breathing going on here. Old friend Monitor and Garraway are host right now to the very likes of Miss Marilyn Monroe. I wonder if I'm scared of you. Are, are most men scared of you? I'm not sure whether I should be frightened of you or not. No, nobody's scared of me. I don't know. I, I bet a lot of guys are scared of you, though, because you're such a institution now. Really, you are. You're, you're a kind of a national possession. Do you feel that you belong to the nation as a whole? Oh, I don't know quite what you mean by that. I sure live here. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it very nicely. Uh, I heard you were smart, but I didn't know. Uh, I'm not. Yes, you don't are. let me fool no. you. I'm not. <laughs> Uh, you know, you have a reputation as uh, among the great mass of people, I think. It's probably the most beautiful uh, blonde uh, in the world, but a kind of a dumb girl because you're a beautiful blonde. And blondes and dumbness seem to go together. I think it all started with maybe with gentlemen prefer blondes. You know, it's interesting um, that people associate, um, if you happen to have blonde hair, you know, naturally mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. not naturally, however... Um, or if you're not out of shape in some way, mm -hmm. you're, you're absolutely dumb. I mean, you're considered dumb. I don't know why that is. It's very, I think it's a very limited view. It isn't true, so <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter what the person, mm -hmm. uh, what they look like, what color hair they have. Nonsense. Or if they uh, happen not to be out of shape. I mean, my time's to come. Gravity catches up with all of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Slowly, but I'm afraid inexorably, if that's the right word. Uh, I hear that you're moving to New York City to live. Is it so? Yes. Um, this will be my home from now on. Mm -hmm. That is until I retire. And when I retire, I'm going to retire to Brooklyn. Really? <laughs> Why Brooklyn? Oh, that's my favorite place in the world so far that I've seen. Sure enough. I haven't traveled much, but I don't think I'll find anything to replace Brooklyn. You're going to help our rating in Brooklyn about nine points. Well, uh, why, why is it Brooklyn? What, what happens there with you? Well, almost everything. Um, I just like walking around. Mm -hmm. I think the view's better from Brooklyn. You know, right. you can look back over and see Manhattan. Yeah, that's, that's the only the, place you can see Manhattan from your That's the right. best view, but it isn't only the view. It's the people. It's, um, I like the streets. I guess the people and the streets and mm -hmm. the atmosphere. I just like it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about uh, the singing thing for a little bit. Uh, did you, uh, well, who are, who are your favorite people to hear sing modern music? Well, my very favorite person... And um, I love her as a person, as well as a singer. I think she's the greatest, and that's Ella Fitzgerald. Ah, you, you fall right in the happy club. Who's your favorite man singer? Well, frankly, yes. I have to say Frank. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> However, he didn't used to be. It's the way he sings now. I know when oh, I was yeah. a kid in, you know, junior high school and high school, and he was sort of... Uh, Bobby Sox mm -hmm. idol even though I was in Bobby Sox he wasn't my idol it isn't until recently I think his whole style and um, I don't know there's something that's changed he, he drastically big. he matured the somehow best. The, the sound that he makes now is such a big round well it's his sound. style to me it's his style when it comes to sound I like Sammy Davis too but Frank's style you can't beat it Hey, Jerry, you got a cigarette? Have I got a cigarette? <laughs> mean, I got these cigarettes. You mean Chesterfield? I mean Chesterfield. Well, I'm with you. Which means that Chesterfield, first cigarette with premium quality throughout in both regular and king size, brings you the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis Show. Chesterfield is best for you, so here's the thing for you to do. Buy your smokes the modern way, regular king size. Start today. Sound off for Chesterfield, sound off for Chesterfield. Buy a pack of Chesterfields. And do it today. Ah. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring you our master of ceremonies, Dean Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Tonight, our Chesterfield carton is just full of regular and king-size surprises, especially for my partner, Jerry. You see... Though he does know we're supposed to give out the famous Red Book Awards to some special guest, he doesn't know that our own extra special guest is Marilyn Monroe. That's right. Now, let's start the show rolling with a fitting theme song. You'd be surprised. So good in the crowd, but when you get her alone, you'd be surprised. Marilyn Monroe broke through as an actress in 1950 with small but acclaimed roles in All About Eve in the Asphalt Jungle. She was then a mistress of Johnny Hyde, head of the William Morris Agency. Hyde negotiated a seven year contract with 20th Century Fox and then unexpectedly passed away of a heart attack. In 1951, Monroe had supporting roles in three Fox comedies. As Young As You Feel, Love Nest, and Let's Make It Legal. With her star on the rise, she received several thousand fan letters a week and was declared Miss Cheesecake by the Army newspaper Stars and Stripes. In early 1952, as she began a much-publicized romance with ex-Yankee Joe DiMaggio, Monroe revealed she'd posed nude in 1949, thus getting ahead of the scandal and gaining sympathy from the public. She explained she'd been broke and needed the money, and was soon featured on the cover of Life magazine as the talk of Hollywood. Gossip columnist Hedda Hopper declared her the cheesecake queen turned box office smash. Wanting to improve her acting, she studied hard with Michael Chekhov. Two of Monroe's films, Clash by Night and Don't Bother to Knock, were released soon after to capitalize on public interest. The films showed her range, as she played a fish canary worker in the former and a disturbed babysitter in the latter. In Howard Hawks' Monkey Business, she played a secretary opposite Cary Grant. In O. Henry's Full House with Charles Lawton, she appeared in a passing vignette as a 19th century streetwalker. Monroe added to her sex symbol reputation by wearing a revealing dress when acting as Grand Marshal at the Miss America pageant parade, and told gossip columnist Earl Wilson that she usually wore no underwear. By the end of the year, gossip columnist Florabel Muir named Monroe the It Girl of 1952. Well, friends, lots of people ask me about my partner's childhood. Now, let me tell you that Jerry had it plenty tough as a kid. He had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and walk 20 miles through snow and rain to get to school. Yeah, that's why I never went. Jerry Lewis! <laughs> Jerry, I think we'd all like to know more about your background. You came from a theatrical family, didn't you? I'll have you know I was born on the stage. Really, Jerry? Yes, and it went over so good, my mother kept it in the act. <laughs> well, I sure wish I could have seen your act, Jerry. It was really great, Dean. My father used to come out and juggle 16 plates with his left hand. What did he do with his right hand? Pick up the pieces. <laughs> your mother's uh, contribution to the act? Oh, she was a great sword swallower. She used to swallow a sword five feet long. Well, what's so great about that? Mother's only four feet tall. Oh. <laughs> and what's your mother doing now? She works for the park department. She walks around picking up papers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you were the star of the act, though, Jer. You're so right, Deanie, darling. Mm. <laughs> you see, Dad used to balance me at the end of a six-foot pole. But one day, the act broke up. What happened? Did you fall? No. The pole ran off and got married. (laughs) (laughs) Then there were just the three of you. Yes, after that, we did a magic act. Dad put me in a basket and stuck swords through it. (laughs) Swords? And uh, what did you do in the act? Bleed. Bleed. (laughs) Well, that figures, that figures. You should have seen it, Dini Durling. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Renan's poor dad used to put a balloon in my mouth and shoot it out with an arrow at a distance of six inches. Well, that isn't much of a trick, shooting a balloon out of your mouth with an arrow at the distance of six inches. Through the back of the head? No. <laughs> with an arrow sticking out of your head, what did you do? Help my mother pick up papers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
it was mighty nice of you to lend your mother a helping head. <laughs> Must have been wonderful, dear. Mother, father, and son working together. What was the name of the act? The Flying Fink. Oh, all right. <laughs> Somewhere that when you grew older, you did an act with a train seal that dived into a tank of water. Yes, indeed, indeed, I did, Beanie. <laughs> we laid off for five years until one day we got a break and opened at the palace. The first show, the seal dived into the tank and drowned. Drowned? How come? He hadn't worked in so long as he got out of swim. <laughs> there, there was a lot of sorrow in the family. Ah, huh, Jerry? Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> Take my brother Bernie, for instance. Is that the brother who was 28 years old and already can say da-da? <laughs> no, Bernie's the stupid one Oh The one whose head grew to a point because of an accident Bernie's head grew to a point because of an accident? Yeah, when he was a baby, he fell into an ice cream cone Oh, and what's Bernie doing now? Helping mother pick up papers <laughs> When you're asked to try a cigarette, you want to know, and you ought to know, what that cigarette is meant to people who smoke it and who smoke it all the time. For almost a year now, a medical specialist has given a group of Chesterfield smokers thorough examinations every two months. When Niagara was released in January of 1953, women's clubs protested it as immoral. In some scenes, Monroe's body was covered only by a sheet or towel, considered shocking by contemporary audiences. The film's most famous scene is a long shot of Monroe from behind, walking with hips swaying. Audiences turned out in droves. The next month, Marilyn Monroe was the guest of Dean and Jerry's February 24, 1953 episode. And now, folks, comes the real special part of our program, the happy time when we introduce our guest star. Of course, tonight it's especially happy because we have Marilyn Monroe. As I told you, Jerry doesn't know about it, so it's going to be a complete surprise. And uh, here comes Jerry. Dean, who is it, Dean? Who? Our guest, Dean, who? Is it? Guests are who? <laughs> well, I'll give you a hint. If I were an artist, I'd like to do her in oil. You'd like to do her in oil? <laughs> Yeah, now who's our guest star? Sardine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Look, you take the most beautiful legs in the world, the most beautiful figure in the world, and the most beautiful face in the world, and put them all together. Now, what you got? The ugliest woman in the world. How come? You got me so excited, I put everything in the wrong place. <laughs> wow. Well, this girl has everything in the right place. Jerry, every once in a while, a meteor flashes through the skies and falls into the ocean. Fortunately for us, the ball of fire we have as our guest missed the ocean and landed at 20th Century Fox. So, I give you the two most exciting words in the modern dictionary. Marilyn Monroe! Thanks, Dean. That was a very flattering introduction. Well, you deserve it, Miss Maron. <laughs> Dean, look at your script. It's Monroe. I'm looking at you. It's my own. <laughs> right, Jeff? zippity doo da dee dee daddy <laughs> Get a load of the dress she's wearing, Dean. Two armholes loosely tied together. I'll be what a dress. Oh, it's nothing much. Just, <laughs> just something I threw on. You almost missed, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Dean. Thanks, boys. Do you really think this gown does something for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it does a lot more for us. What is, well, what is it made of? Silk? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's just plain cotton. Cotton? I see more cotton on top of a bottle of aspirin. <laughs> I'd better talk to the wardrobe mistress about this dress. It's so tight, I nearly wore myself up putting it on. Poor girl, are you all in? Gosh. <laughs> well, gosh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> Dean, Miss Monroe, Dean and I saw your last picture in Niagara. It was a darb, a positive darb. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
<laughs> what was the audience reaction to the picture in the theater? After your first scene, uh, they served the Hershey bars in Dixie cups. Gene. Yes? You better concentrate on the script. It's your turn. Oh. <laughs> We had a cocktail party at my house with a bartender and everything, and we showed home movies of your picture, Miss Monroe. Now, you're not going to tell me that when I came on the screen that the ice and the drinks melted. Oh, no, that would be silly. <laughs> <laughs> the bartender melted. <laughs> oh, you fellas are just kidding. Kidding? Remember the scene where you were kissing your boyfriend? Yes. Yeah. Right in the middle, my canary threw himself at the cat. <laughs> Uh, Miss Monroe, if you go out with me after the show, I'll buy you a bottle of perfume. You're wasting your time, dear. Marilyn would rather go out with somebody like me. That's right. I'm a blonde, and I like to go out with tall, dark, handsome men. You see, opposites attract. Then you'll love me. I'm just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jerry, you're a man, and I'm a woman. Now that we've chosen up sides, let's play. <laughs> Won't you give up, Jerry? Marilyn prefers me. I've gone out with women who wouldn't even look at you. So what? I've gone out with women who wouldn't look at me either. <laughs> okay, Jerry. Supposing I do go out with you, what do we do? Well, we get in my car and drive up Lookout Mountain. And when we get to the top... Yes? Look out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, Jerry. If I went out with you, it might get into the newspaper. And you know how some newspapers will do anything for a story. Well, we do know about that type of newspaper, Marilyn, but we can paint a better picture if we dramatize it. So, Fenneman, start dramatizing. The Chesterfield Buy a Mother Carton Players present Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Marilyn Monroe in a dramatic newspaper yarn. It's the story of a cold-blooded newspaper editor who has no friends, but who is loved by Marilyn Monroe, entitled... So who needs friends? <laughs> You know, yes, this is the morning hangover. Editor Lewis speaking. What? Just a minute. I'll get the press room. Hello, press room. What is it, Chief? Quick, tear out the front page. Why? My mother just bought a new garbage pail and she needs something to line it with. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Tell me, baby doll, what's cooking? I am. Get off my lap. <laughs> I've got a headline for you, Chief. Noted doctor advocates fish breeding for a hobby. Too long. Cut it down. What'd I say? Surgeon, urgent, surgeon, merchant. <laughs> Come on, baby. Give us a kiss. Editor Lewis, I'm the publisher of this paper, and I'm not paying you to kiss our star report. Spending all your time kissing her doesn't increase our circulation, but it increases mine. <laughs> I, I can explain, Publisher Martin. I just came in to show him the wardrobe I'm going to take along my vacation. This is my hunting outfit. Hunting outfit? But that's a strapless, backless gown. You don't know your clothes. You don't know what I'm hunting. <laughs> I should have known better than to hire a woman report. Just a minute, sir. I'm a newspaper man. I'm not a woman. You're not? I think we've got a scoop. <laughs> I mean, while I'm on this paper, I don't want to be thought of as a woman. I want to be thought of as a man. Okay, but I hope we get a joining lockers at the Y. Yeah, no. <laughs> Morning hangover. Oh, Chief. You remember Detroit Danny? You mean a gangster who was almost beaten to death last week with a bag of wet chicken livers? <laughs> yeah, well, he was shot to death. And I found a slug. That slug is evidence. Bring it right over here. I can't. I use it to make this phone call. <laughs> I know how Detroit Danny got knocked off. He was trying to blackmail Eskimo Eddie. Chief, if you print that story, Eddie will kill you. And I'll be alone. On a bet? <laughs> Chief, darling, don't do it. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Ah, stop your nagging. <laughs> I'm a woman, and I want loving arms around me. Don't worry. If I'm killed, somebody will come along tomorrow. Yeah, but what am I going to do tonight? <laughs> I don't want you, Mary. Give up your job, and I'll marry you. But what other work could I get? Well, don't worry about it, kids. You're young. You can always live on love. Yes. Give up your job, and we'll have kisses for breakfast 
Kisses for lunch. Kisses for supper. Gosh, kisses for breakfast. Kisses for lunch. Kisses for supper. Okay, it's a deal, baby. But I'm warning you. About what? Don't ever let me catch you having any meals out. <laughs> Chesterfield is the first cigarette to offer smokers premium quality in both regular and king size. King size Chesterfield contains tobaccos of better quality and higher price than any other king size cigarette. Chesterfield is first to name all its ingredients, ingredients that make the best possible smoke. And Chesterfield gives you this scientific report. No adverse effects to the nose and throat of a group smoking only Chesterfields. So enjoy your smoking. Change to Chesterfield today. Much milder, with an extraordinarily good taste. You know, there's a familiar saying that goes, ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. But somehow when you set the question to music, that's the chorus of another color, an all-time favorite. For instance... How much do I love you? Well, I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times a day do I think of you? How many roses are sprinkled with dew? How far would I travel to be where you are? How far is the journey from here to the star? And if I ever lost you, how much would I cry? How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? Red letter time on our Chesterfield calendar. Or I should say, red book time, because here in the studio with us tonight is the editor of that fine magazine to make some very special awards. So let me happily make way for Mr. Wade Nichols. Thank you, Dean. For 14 years now, Red Book Magazine has annually honored outstanding Hollywood personalities for their contributions to motion picture art. This year... Reflecting our magazine's identification with the interests of young adults, we're unusually happy to make our Silver Cup Award to a group of the young people who brighten this industry's movie screens and its future. So to the winners in five categories of talent, Red Book Magazine salutes the youth of Hollywood. You know, not every American family is blessed with a champion in the home, so when we come across a family that's blessed with two, we've really hit the unusual. Here they are, the youthful stars of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's Everything I Have is Yours, elected by Redbook as the best young dance team, 
the mighty talented Mr. and Mrs. Marge and Gower Champion. Thank you, Abe. I hope we can always dance as brightly and happily as my heart is dancing now at receiving your award. How about you, Gower? Well, all I can add, dear, is thank you. Thank you very much, Wade. When the stage play, the member of the wedding, opened on Broadway, the critics unanimously hailed our next awardee as a great, new, and fresh dramatic star. Her performance in Columbia Pictures' version of this play has just won her a nomination for Hollywood's Academy Award as Best Actress. But much before that nomination, it was Red Book Magazine's pleasure to honor as the best young actress the well-deserving Julie Harris. Julie is on tour, and she speaks to us from Cleveland. I'm deeply appreciative of this great honor, and I'd like you to know how disappointed I am that I cannot be with you tonight to accept in person the Red Book Award which means so very much to me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The foreign field of show business never yielded a lovelier, more charming, or able young star than the girl whom Red Book honors now. She scored a hit at first sight, and we're sure she'll score a good many more as the years go by. For Best Young Foreign Actress... Here's lovely Leslie Carroll. Thank you very much, Mr. Nichols. Thank you. You know, I've, I've learned a lot of new words since I came to America, but I don't know how to say how happy I am about this honor. Thank you very much. Good night. When it came to the category Best Young Box Office Personality, the winner was obvious. This young gal proved the box office bonanza to 20th Century Fox Studios. He has a mighty cute, golden, glittering, and glamorous a bonanza is Miss Marilyn Monroe. Thank you, Wade. Appearing on the show tonight and getting this great honor, well... You can sort of breathless. Thanks a million. What can I say about our next award winners? Webster, Funk and Wagnalls, and even the Greeks would be at a loss for words to describe their amazing and amusing antics. Here they are, the best young comedy team, North, South, East, and West, the Hal Wallace Paramount stars Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. All right, you, you say it, Jerry. No, you say it, Dean. I'll tell you what. We'll both say it. You ready? Ready. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Ladies Nichols. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very and proud ladies, tonight and to be gentlemen. able to receive... We are very award. proud tonight and a, to Jerry, be able to receive Jerry, this wonderful Jerry, award. Jerry! What's the matter? Was I going too fast for your <laughs> No, but seriously, Jerry and I are really proud to get this honor. Aren't we, Jerry? We certainly are, Dino. Our most sincere thanks go to Mr. Nichols and Red Book Magazine. We also thank all the guests who appeared with us tonight. And as for Marilyn Monroe, thank you on behalf of Dean and myself for being a wonderful guest. Friends, Jerry and I will be back next week. Don't wait till then to try our Chesterfield. Chesterfield is the first cigarette with premium quality throughout in both regular and king size. And Chesterfield is a cigarette that gives you scientific evidence of real smoking pleasure. We know Chesterfields are best for us, folks. You try them. You'll find they're best for you. So until next week, this is Dean Martin. And this is Jerry Lewis saying good night, everybody. God bless you. Just heard transcribed the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis show. 
Produced and directed by Dick Mack. Written by Arthur Phillips and Austin Taylor. With music prepared and conducted by Dick Stabile. And this is George Fenneman reminding you to listen to Chesterfield's award-winning show, Dragnet, Sunday night on this same NBC State Show. Tonight, visit 79...